right, so here we are. Um, this is the last part of the um, lesson for the tassel. So um, I'm going to show you two methods. One method is for those of you who don't know how to do any kind of wire wrapping or jewelry. Um, it's a qu it's quicker um, and it's it'll make this go a lot easier you know quicker for you so basically um, I'll show you the quick method and then the method that takes longer which involves wire wrapping and kind of like jewelry making techniques but I'll show you alternatives even if you want to make it a little bit more complicated of things that you can do to attach some of the charms without wire wrapping experience so I chose these colors for her because look at how cute that looks. It reminds me of Easter um, and spring. That wasn't my intention, to be honest with you, but that's kind of what happened. So all you're going to do is you're going to grab several different types of yarns and really lightweight ribbons, not, not ribbons, I should say, trim. And uh, you're going to lay several of them out. And I'll show you what I did here. I've showed this before in another video where I um, added it to a, a altered file folder. And I'll leave a link down below for that. So I just kind of was laying out colors that kind of matched what I used in the sample. And you're going to take... I did these while I was watching TV last night. Um, I made a few of them. And then I cinched them together with a bulb pin. Just so I could keep them all together. And these are very... There's no... Uh, they're not even. I don't like them even. So basically I take... I don't know, it's about two feet of each uh, type of yarn and trim. And I cut it, and then I just put them all together like this. Like I said, they don't match as far as like length. I like them to look all kind of different lengths. And I'll just keep adding to it until I like what I see. I'll typically will look at it and go, okay... Some of these are going to be on the inside, so if you, you know, some of these uh, yarns won't show as much. And so I'll try to put the ones that I really want to show kind of on the top so that when I bend it like this, they'll be more on top. Like this real spark, this pretty one here, this real sparkly one. I wanted that to be on the top. And then I just find the center and that's all I do to make the body of the tassel. Now this is where the um, easy part comes in. If you're just gonna make a tassel like this and then maybe attach one of your shrinky dink, shrinky dink charms, you're just going to take a piece of, um, maybe I'll cut one of these here. This one's too long anyway, uh, yarn. In the middle and then just tie it that's all you're gonna do it's as easy as that and then you can add your um, charms or just leave it like this if you want to and you're gonna tie it a couple times I'm not gonna tie it real tight because I'm gonna be using this as a sample for the other one but it looks it's really pretty and here's the one I was telling you about um, that I did a tutorial on and I just added it, tied it in the center like, just like I showed you, um, put a bulb pin on, in the middle, it's kind of hard to see because it's kind of fluffy, and then attached it to a an eyelet that I have right here, it's right there. Um, and then you have a, a real fun kind of shabby chic looking uh, tassel. So for this one, If you were to just do it like this and have your uh, tie up at the top like this, you could add your cute little 
theory with a bulb pin and then just attach it to the top of this if you wanted to. So that's the real quick easy way to do this and, and it still looks really cute. I'm going to show you one that's a little bit more in depth, a little bit more complicated for those of you who like a challenge. So I had made a sample of one using the whites and the creams and this is what it looks like. I really like the way it came out. And I used the the moon stamp from Red Lead and I stamped on the both sides. Very simple, just used the, the white shrinky dink, sanded it on both sides, stamped it with stays on, and then cut it out, the, cut the circle out, and then stamped it on the other side so I knew where to stamp it because it's a circle. And then <clears throat> I just distressed it a little bit with some uh, the ink, you know, like we do with our paper and how I showed you to do these little guys here. <clears throat> and then shrunk it and then added it to this is from an old necklace and then I just did you know some wire wrapping here and added these charms so this is the same technique as far as bundling all the um, the uh, fibers together and so for the top I I, you know, I, if you've been following me for a while, you know, I don't really throw things away. So I do a lot of altered art bottle, um, ornaments and jewelry. And sometimes I use, um, salt and pepper shakers. And so I had a ton of them. They, they weren't this color. I, I painted them just the silver ones, the silver salt and pepper shakers. And then I spray painted them because I thought they would make good tassel toppers and they do so um, I this is in pink any kind of spray paint that you can use uh, you know on for regular paint jobs will work you just have to spray them out obviously outside a couple coats <clears throat> so that's what I use for the the topper on this tassel I punched holes in it I'm going to show you how to do that and then I made a little fancy um, top on top of that. I'm not sure I'm going to get that um, fancy for the this little pink one that we're doing, but it's really, it came out really nice, and this would be pretty to add to anything. You could just add it to some decor in your house if you wanted to, or a journal, or like I did for my altered file folder. So that's kind of the direction we're going to be going with this one. So spray paint a um, the lid of a salt and pepper shaker and you're going to mark the pepper shaker lid with a pencil and I don't know where my pencil is. Let's see if this one will work. <clears throat> so another thing is is you have holes already in the top of the pepper shaker lid so that's what I'm going to be using I'm going to be using those two holes to um, put the wire through and I'm going to just do four holes so I'm going to go in between so there's the halfway mark on that one And this one and then I'm going to use these two holes as a guide for you could do more holes if you want so I have marks where I'm going to punch the holes you can probably this is fairly thin metal so you can probably use a hole punch for that's used for um, <clears throat> paper um, I have happened to have a metal hole punch and this one's a 16th inch and I'm just going to punch that there, not too close 
to the edge. <clears throat> and there's always going to be a little thing that sticks out in the back, so I have to go back and either cut them off or I can punch it again and it'll squish it down. So there's these little tabs that are left whenever you punch the metal. And if you go back in, it kind of squishes them down or it usually takes them off. Not like that one. Actually, you have to go on the inside. Just kind of squishes them. It doesn't doesn't make another hole. You're just going back inside of the hole that you've already punched, and then just kind of pushing that tab off. Oops, I think I punched that one too much. Actually, what I think I'm going to do is just kind of take it off. So you have your holes punched, ready to go to add dangles. And I punched that one too far. I'm going to take some wire, and this is like a 22 gauge wire, and use my probably about at least, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe 10 inches. And we're going to cut it. At 10 inches and then bend it in the middle and this is where we're going to grab our tassel fibers like that And you can sew it if you want to. I did on this other, the white one, because it was uh, pretty big. But on this one, I'm just going to actually tie this tie that I already started here. And just tighten it a little bit. Oops, is that one? Oh, there we go. It's this Angora um, yarn. It's kind of hard to find what where the ends are. There we go. Let's make sure it's semi. So this is going to be the top because of the spark, this sparkly yarn I have. And I'm going to take this and it's just going underneath. It's not, I'm not piercing the fibers. <clears throat> and then I'm going to tightly twist it just a couple times on there. So I have these two pieces of wire and they're going to go right up to into the lid. So like that. And then just pull it all the way up so it's kind of tight. And, in, and it looks cute like that, just like that. Make sure it's real tight and then twist it a couple of times up on top. Don't go any more than a couple times because, oops, that's a little crooked. 
um, because you're going to be putting a bead or a bead cap on top of that. Straighten this out. I have some jewelry classes on in my online school if you want to learn basic jewelry making techniques. I'll put a link down below for some of the classes that have um, some of these techniques in it. So um, now I'm going to... So I could either just hook her on just like that, which I might very well do. Actually, that doesn't go very well. Or I could hang her on some chain, which I think I will do. So when you're, you can buy pre-made uh, like rosary chain, they call it sometimes, or beaded chain. Like this, so you could use this, or you could use uh, old necklaces that you have that are beaded. You can take them apart. I'm just gonna move all this stuff here, and <clears throat> this is just some cheapy kind of plastic, uh, but I think it looks cute with this. So I think I'll try that. And sometimes you can, you might be able to hook the. This on here just depends on how long. And that looks like it might work. Otherwise you'll need a, a jump ring. But uh, I'm gonna just keep adding to this and I will come back and show you the finished product. Um, if you are gonna be doing it this way, you will want to have jump rings on each one of these holes so that you can add the dangles. Also, I have these uh, little beads, they're old, they're little glass flowers. So I might add some of those um, onto just part of the parts of the, the trim here. So I'll show you when I get back. All right, I thought I would show you some of the wire wrapping because uh, honestly, I, I don't want to scare anybody away. I just thought it would be kind of boring for those of you who don't want to do this, but I'll show you my process um, for putting these the chain and the, the wire and everything on here and this um, I, I also came up with this little cute flower attachment so I'll show you what I did so I attached the first fairy I'm really liking this these really aren't my colors but I just love how it's coming out it's super cute and then um, this one is just an old I think it's probably rose quartz that I added to this. So I'm just going to open this up. These are called chain nose pliers. I'm just gonna open that up. This is kind of soft wire, but um, I think it'll be okay. And I'm going to attach it to the hole that's, that we punched. So yeah, so those of you who don't you know, care about this, you can just stop and not watch anymore, but um, I didn't think I don't want you to think I was being stingy with my techniques. It's just I thought you would be bored. That honestly, that's what I thought. So, but then I thought, well, you might. Some of you might like this. So, so I'm just putting that in there and then closing up the eye. And so, you know, most of you who know who make jewelry know exactly what I'm talking about when I'm doing this. So, it's looking cute. And then I'm um, adding these, these are, um, I don't even know if you can find these anymore. This was from a necklace uh, that I found and I just was so excited because these are very difficult to find. These are glass. Um, it might have been something from Japan um, back in the day, but they're glass beaded flowers and they have a wire inserted into them. And so I'm, I'm undoing the wire a little bit. And these are so old, they're kind of, they have a patina on them. Just have to be gentle because they are old. 
and then I'm inserting that wire into the hole of the lid and it's going to kind of screw in there and that kind of holds the chain in place and it's a cute little decoration as long as it stays there so I'm just screwing that in there and then I'm going to bring the wire up and over and just kind of clamp it onto the and it looks cute So this was all unexpected. I didn't know I was going to do this. I, you know, that's just kind of how things happen sometimes. So I'll just keep adding. So I'm going to add a, I'm going to push that in a little bit more. I'll fix that in a minute. Um, so I have that other cute little tag that, we made or I made and I'm going to add some more of this chain onto it first so I'm gonna kind of you know you want to look at your piece and see the placement of everything and I'm probably oh well I guess it'll be a little wonky. I might only use three. We'll see. So I'm just opening the eye and then inserting it. Hopefully it's not too big to go inside of this. If it is, I, there we go. Looks like it worked. You can see I, w I put another little flower on this and because there was a hole over here and I'm going to open the eye on the top and insert that into the hole here. sure this is facing the right way also um, what I'm gonna do and I didn't think about this until I was putting this together is I am going to color the back probably with a permanent kind of a marker and then put some glitter on it because I don't if it flips around I don't like how it looks like that These are kind of getting lost in the tassel, but I probably should have added a few more strands of yarn. And then I'll do one more. I like how sparkly it is. And what am I going to do on this side? Let's see. Oh, maybe I'll add oh, one of these little nests that I made a long time ago. I don't know if I'll be able to put that on there. There are little nests that I made. I have some pink beads here too. on here. Oh. I 
Let's see. stick with this for right now. It's just a little nest with little eggs in it. Pearl eggs. So I'll, I'll add these little um, flowers later, but now for the top, if you want to get a little fancy, you can add bead caps or you can add more, like, like these little flowers might stick in there if you wanted to do that. I like doubling up on my bead caps, so I'm going to... These are bigger bead caps. They're um, probably 10 millimeter. I don't use them very often. I usually use really tiny bead caps, but this is kind of a bigger project. And let's see. So because these have a big hole in them. I'll be able to stick both pieces of wire through them like that. And then I could add maybe this on top. This probably doesn't, won't let me. I think it's just one. Let's see what that looks like. You could always um, add rhinestones to this too, like rhinestone chain. You can really, you know, embellish them a lot, quite a bit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut away some of this. Another thing you could do if you wanted to is you could add small beads here and then make a really pretty kind of a closure or, you know, a hanger if you wanted to. 
maybe I'll do that and I'll be right back when I grab some other small bits. All right, so I got a, a few different size beads. Uh, I found these heart beads that I forgot I had. They're super pretty, they're pink. So I thought those look pretty on the top. Then I'm adding a contrasting bead, which is kind of like a pearl color. And then while I was just looking at some of the things that I had laid down, um, this is a butterfly filigree that I painted with the um, vintage. Uh, they're kind of like out there, like in little alcohol ink looking tubes, but they're like a solvent based, almost tube paint. Anyway, I had painted this a long time ago and I thought it looked really pretty. And then I thought, oh, this might look pretty like that. So I don't know if this is going to happen, but I might put this at the very top and that'll be part of the design as well. So that's kind of how things happen. You know, if you just set things around and then you kind of look at them and then, you know, your mind starts going, well, what about this? So that's kind of how I, that's my thought process anyway. And then I thought, when I was a little girl, pink and green were my two of my favorite um, crayon colors. Let me know in the comments below what your fa favorite crayon colors were. So these are a type of a seed bead. So because the wire is so thin, they should go on. I thought about using contrasting, more contrasting colors, but I don't really want to do that. So. Might use a bigger pink bead. We'll see. I think it's going to be pretty. It's so uh, pastel y. <laughs> these are, like I said, I don't really use these colors normally, but I really like because of the colors that I used for the fairies and it's it is a fairy theme I thought it would be appropriate I'm gonna kind of see what these look like on here they would be more kind of a dangly look or these ones well, that might be kind of cool these are just some leaf beads and these bigger pink beads were on the necklace so I'll see if I can get another one Remind me of antenna. <laughs> so I'm just experimenting with this, not sure if it's gonna work. And then one of these flowers would go in the middle. <clears throat> so 
So you're just seeing my design process. I I know you guys like seeing that, some of you. So I'm just looking at it, seeing making sure it'll hang properly and swing properly. And then I'm just going to do a wire wrap on this side. <clears throat> Make sure it still moves. <clears throat> and then a wire wrap on this side. This is just uh, brass 22 gauge, by the way. I buy my wire from Thunderbird Supply. They're based in New Mexico and I buy it in bulk. Those of you who have taken classes with me already know that. Just looking at it. Yeah, I think that'll be cute. So, whenever I'm designing something, um, and I've said this before, but I usually go with a theme or a color. The, in this case, it was kind of both a theme, the theme being kind of fairies, and then the colors were kind of dictated by the colors that I used to color her. And so that dictated what my fibers were going to be, and then all the accessories that I was going to add to it. And I just started pulling out co those the colors, uh, mostly pinks, and um, just started building that way. That's kind of how I think. And um, yeah, that's cute. So I think I will glue. I don't think this will work if I just stick it in there because it's so old. So I'm going to glue one of these in there, kind of because they're glass, they have some, the area where they used it in the mold, there was, it's probably pressed glass. So I'll be gluing that in there. And um, I'm gonna add something here to hang, uh, maybe some chain. I have this chain right here. This works. So this is pre-made beaded chain. Etsy, you can go to Etsy and find a bunch of it. Just check the prices, you know, different sellers have different prices. And it's usually by the foot. This one I got years ago. So, um, so, um, I doubt if it's still around. So this is going to be really a, kind of a long piece. I probably will add a jump ring, like a large jump ring. Let's see if I have one over here. Because it'll lay better. Be right back. So, <clears throat> I have these, uh, soldered jump rings that work great. I'm only using two links on here.
Just open the eyes on each side and then slip the jump ring on both sides. And then close them. So that'll be like this. Ah, everything's coming up. Like that. Be cute. Kind of elaborate, but I'm probably I'm gonna add more stuff too. I might add some rhinestone, but I already added the cute little flowers here. And um, I'll try to put pictures um, at the end so you can see what it looks like. In full length but I think it's cute my favorite color crayons when I was a child so because there's a lump on the back of these you can cut that off off. Just be very gentle. Just use some crappy wire cutters. These are my bad ones. And just gently nip away, just like you would if you're doing um mosaics. And it's so soft it just just chips away a little bit, little tiny pieces. So it so it'll lay a little bit flatter. And then the glue I'm going to use is um, E6000 and that has to sit for several hours they say up to 24 hours I don't know if that's true but yeah you, you need to clean your surface with rubbing alcohol first and then use the, the E6000 to glue it I'm gonna glue two flowers so I'll be doing one and then tomorrow I'll probably be gluing down another one and um, I'll show you the finished pro product when it's done Okay, so the the flowers have dried. I attached them on both sides, which meant I had to wait one day in between each, but it's really important that you do that so that they stay. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is, and you can stop at this point if you want to and be done, but I, I'm just going to add some extra stuff to this. I have some rhinestone chain, which I've cleaned with rubbing alcohol. And I've also cleaned the surface that I'm gluing this to down with rubbing alcohol. The reason why you need to do that, it might sound like a, a silly step, but it makes a difference because there might be dirt or oil from your hands. Um, and it just inhibits the glue to stick properly. So... Um, I'm going to add this. I'm going to, I might do two layers. I'm going to start with one. So I'm going to cut a piece. And I have a, a strip of uh, paper here. And I'm going to use E6000. And you can use a toothpick or some kind of pin or something to drag the glue along the area that you're going to be gluing the rhinestone. And usually there's a, a blob of glue that won't work right away when you first start this uh, squeezing out the glue here. And put the lid on right away if you're not used to using E6000, it's messy. So I'm going to take pieces of the glue and drag them on the area that I'm gluing my rhinestone to. I had just had to look up at the camera to see if this was being shown and I got glue on a part that I didn't want to get glue so I'm just going to have to get that off. Try to put an even line of glue here. And then drop, figure out where the front and the back is. 
this is the front. So I'm going to start in the back and I'm just going to take the rhinestone chain and just drop it on there. And this is the easiest way I have found to glue rhinestone chain. And just kind of look at it, make sure that it's even. Try to get the excess glue off right away because it's hard to get off once it dries. And you can get it off, it's just it might pull the rhinestone off. So kind of pat it down, make sure it's all on there. And you have to wait again. I know this is one of those things it's like can't you just find some glue that makes it stick right away? Um, I haven't found anything besides E6000 that works like this. So, And um, this is having a tendency to flip, so I'm going to make sure it's sitting the way that I want it to. You have about a minute or two before it starts setting so that you can let the process start. Um, and it'll be worth it. And like I said, I might add another layer when it's done. Adding things like this might seem um, too time consuming, but I, I have found that um, over all the time that I've been creating and selling my work, it's always worth the extra time and um, effort to make it so that you really like it when it's done. You like it so much that you don't even know if you want to sell it. <laughs> That's kind of a good gauge. Okay, gonna let that sit and I might be adding some doodads to the to the wings. Alright guys, so I like the way it came out. It's really pretty. And I'm going to just leave it like that. I just think that tops it off. And I, like I said, I will try to leave pictures at the end so that you can see what it looks like um, hanging. It's too difficult to show you from the video here. It's pretty long from... So from the tippy top to, so from here to the top, it's 12. So it's about a foot and a half long. It's pretty long. Obviously this is more decorative, so um, it'd be pretty difficult to put this on a journal. But you could make something um, shorter. You know, you could cut the tassel here and maybe not make all this, but... Uh, I hope I gave you some food for thought and some new ideas for being creative. It's kind of my goal with these um, videos to teach you uh, creativity in general and just pop out some inspiration and ideas for things that maybe you hadn't thought of. So I appreciate all of you and I will see you in the next video.